So I want to make some important remarks about the code that we have just seen. Here it is. And the first thing I want to observe is that there is a great deal of similarity between this last condition in the mathematical definition, if n is a power of 2, if n is even, and n over 2 is a power of 2. Uh, so there is similarity between that and this last return statement, where in C we write n is even by doing n remainder 2 double equals 0, and the recursive call to is 2 power n over 2. Now I will say a little bit more about the AND operation on the next slide. Here I want to focus on the recursive call to the is 2 power function, where we're calling is 2 power n by 2. And also in the main function, if you remember, we had a series of printf statements where we were printing if various numbers were powers of 2. So this is how we called the is2 power function with the argument 0 and then we similarly had a call with argument 1 and so on. Now in the previous lecture I had made this point that I want to highlight in this context. Now we have our is2 power function and this is2 power function takes one parameter, which is an unsigned int named n. Now the point I had made in the previous lecture was when this function is called, at that point n is set a value. It gets a value by the caller. Uh, and this is exactly what I mean when I say that parameters are initialized by the caller. So in the main when we say is 2 power brackets 0, then this value 0 is being copied in to the parameter n. Similarly, if somehow we have made it to the recursive call, and the recursive call is again calling the is 2 power function with some value n over 2, then in the recursive call, the parameter n will be set to whatever the expression n over 2 evaluates to. I'm making this point because many times students feel that if I have a parameter n, then inside the function itself I have to set its value. This is not true. The value is set by the person who is calling your function. So if main is calling your function with uh, an argument 7, then at the time when they are calling this uh, function, then the par parameter n will get set to 7. You don't have to set its value. And for this reason, you can see that the first statement I have inside my is2 power function is if n double equals 0. I'm immediately computing with the value of n. I'm assuming that n has a value and I'm seeing is that value equal to 0 or not. So I wanted to highlight this point that parameters are set by the person who is calling your function. You don't have to set their value. You can go ahead and assume they have a value and start computing with it. So with this point out of the way, I just want to highlight uh, also that there is a clever solution to computing powers of 2. This uses some advanced operators in C which we won't have time to discuss. But in the link uh, you can take a look at uh, uh, the code and there I have also given a, another URL where some of these uh, operators are defined. If you're interested you can take a look at those solutions as well. Now let us turn our attention to this and uh, operator and more generally we're going to discuss uh, what I call boolean expressions meaning expressions that are either true or false. So we have already said that there is no uh, sort of built-in true or false inside C and what C actually does is whenever you have an expression like you know x less than 0 that is either true or false or you have an expression like n remainder 2 equals 0 again that is either true or false uh, then these kinds of expressions these boolean expressions are internally represented as integers.
And here is what C does. If an expression is true, then it uses the integer 1. And if an expression is false, it uses the integer 0. When we wrote our is to prime function, we were following this uh, uh, convention that is there already in C, that true is represented internally as 1 and false is represented internally as 0. Now, when it comes to these operators, uh, there are three operators that we will discuss. There is AND, which we have seen is represented as this double ampersand. There is OR, which is represented as these uh, double vertical bars. And there is NOT, which is represented as an exclamation mark. So let us understand these operators. So if I want to, uh, if I have two uh, Boolean expressions, E1 and E2, and I say E1 double AND E2, I just read this as E1 and E2, uh, then this new expression, E1 and E2, this expression is true, meaning it's 1, precisely when both E1 and E2 are true. Now, when uh, C is evaluating an expression like E1 and E2, uh, and it says, look, is E1 true or not? Uh, it says that, well, if E1 is any non-zero value, I'm going to treat it as true. It, doesn't, it isn't particular that E1 has to be the value 1. But when it is evaluating this whole expression and saying, is this expression true or not? If the expression is true, then it represents that resulting value as 1. And if the uh, overall expression is false, then it represents it as zero. So if you are giving the program uh, an expression like E1 or E2, uh, and you are saying, I want the overall expression E1 and E2, then C will uh, take a look at E1 and E2 and will say, as long as both these are non-zero, I'm going to think of both these as true. And if both these are non-zero, then the overall expression E1 and E2 is true, which I will then represent as 1. So this is slightly confusing, uh, but please feel free to repeat this part of the video a few times until you understand it. So uh, I will just uh, point out as an example uh, the expression that we had. So in the expression that we had, the first expression E1 is the stuff in the parentheses n remainder 2 double equals 0. So this is an expression. And since this is an expression actually that evaluates to either true or false, this expression in the brackets will either be 1 or 0. It will be 1 if n is an even number, because for even numbers, n remainder 2 will be equal to 0. Um, and so that true is going to be represented as a 1. And if n is not an even number, if it's an odd number, then n remainder 2 is going to be 1, and 1 is not equal to 0. And that uh, false statement, 1 double equals 0, will be represented as a 0. Uh, so the first expression, e1, will definitely be either 1 or 0. The second expression, e2, is this result of the uh, recursive function call. This is to power, we have said it returns an int. Now, in principle, you could add a return 7 or a return minus 1 in that function if you wanted to. Uh, what C will do is it will treat any non-zero value that is to power returns as if it was true. And if is to power returns 0, only then will it treat it as false. So uh, this is an example of an AND. Now I want to point out uh, a very important word here, uh, and that important word is both. So we say that E1 and E2 is true precisely when both the expressions E1 and E2 are true. And the reason this word both is important uh, is that imagine we are evaluating just the first expression, in this case, n remainder 2 equals 0. And suppose it turns out that n remainder 2 is not equal to 0, meaning n is an odd number. Then it's definitely going to be the case that uh, the overall expression um, is going to be 
false because it's only going to be true if both the expressions are true. So if I found out that the first expression is false, I don't need to evaluate the second expression. And this is called short circuit evaluation. And it's important to note that this double ampersand operator, this AND operator, evaluates using this short circuit uh, logic, meaning uh, it tries to evaluate the first expression. And if that is false, it doesn't bother evaluating the second expression. Now, this can actually be useful. So, for example, suppose it is very cheap, very efficient to check if a number is even or odd. We're just computing this remainder. But it's expensive, perhaps, to check if n over 2 is um, uh, a power of 2 because that might involve many, many more steps. So, by putting the uh, cheap operator first, we're saying that, well, do the cheap test. And if that fails, then you don't have to do the expensive test, right? Uh, imagine if we had put the uh, expressions the other way. If we had put the is to power n over 2 first, then we would have to do this expensive test. And uh, if that was false, uh, of course, we don't have to do the second test, but it, the second test was cheap anyway. So we haven't really saved anything. Uh, but we have already, of course, spent all our time doing the expensive test. Putting it this way uh, gives us an opportunity to write faster code. Uh, there are other reasons for uh, writing code like this. So suppose, for instance, uh, the expressions were different and we wanted to check two conditions and we didn't want to check the second condition unless the first condition was true. Maybe checking the second condition would actually cause an error unless the first condition was true. Uh, so in that case also, uh, it turns out you can use the AND operator and take advantage of the fact that it does this short circuit evaluation. It will not evaluate the second expression unless the first one is true. If the first one is false, it doesn't bother evaluating the second expression. Now, exactly the same thing, uh, the same uh, general idea holds uh, with OR because it turns out that uh, E1 or E2 is false when both E1 and E2 are false. Meaning, the only time E1 or E2 is going to be true is when at least one of E1 uh, or E2 is true. So, again, we can apply short circuit evaluation here. So, imagine we evaluate E1 uh, and we find that it's true. Then we don't have to evaluate E2 because we know that the overall expression is going to be true no matter what E2 is. So, with both AND and OR, uh, we have this short circuit evaluation. And this is important to know because we can take advantage of it when we write our code. And if we're not careful, uh, and we don't understand exactly how short circuit evaluation works, we may actually end up with some errors. Uh, the last operator uh, that is important for Boolean conditions uh, is this um, NOT operator. And so that's represented as an exclamation mark. So exclamation mark E, uh, this is false when E is true, meaning if E is non-zero, that is internally true, then not E, exclamation mark E, is false, right? and vice versa. So we will take a look at more Boolean expressions, uh, more code involving Boolean expressions later on. Uh, so you may find that it's useful to come back to this video and review this material.